If you're considering a move to Tennessee, there are things you really need to know if you want to be happy after you've moved here. In today's show, we're going to talk about 15 fast facts, things you need to know. And that's just going to make your day-to-day -day life here a little bit more fun, a little bit easier, and you'll thank me for it later. So today, we got lots of places to go and things to do. So I'm going to take you along with me as we go through our 15 tips of things you need to know if you're moving to Nashville. Number one. You've got to get on all kinds of waiting lists that relate to your children early, 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 way before you think you need to. So if we're talking preschool or um, elementary schools, and this is not necessarily if you're in the public schools, but certainly if you think you want to take a look at any of the private schools and absolutely for every single preschool there is and um, a daycare center. And this relates to if you're six months pregnant and you're moving to Nashville, go ahead and get on those lists right now because they fill up fast. And we have so many families who have moved to Nashville to this entire eight county SMSA. If you've been here long, you know Nashville is not just the city of Nashville, but it's an eight county SMSA that comprises of Mount Juliet, Hendersonville, Spring Hill, lots of major, major uh, suburban areas. So, so many families are moving here, especially in the last couple of years because of the conservative nature of our area. We love it. We love it that so many people here are constitutional loving Americans. But what that means is many of them have families and many of them are bringing lots of children. So if you are going to move here or you're considering moving here, and as I say, even if you're not even, well, probably if you're pregnant, yeah, if you're pregnant, and you're gonna be here within the next year or so and you need some help, you think you're gonna need some home help or you're gonna to wanna to have the children in the daycare or you're considering private schools anywhere within the Middle Tennessee area, go ahead, get on those waiting lists, start checking them out. If you need some ideas of where, because you know approximately where you want to live, reach out to me, I can give you some names of the best schools within those areas. Number two, we all want a good burger now and then. You can't not go through life without a good burger unless you're vegetarian and you're kind of on your own. I'll talk about a little bit of a vegetarian area a little bit later. But if you want some of the best burgers, and I mean the best, and it's not ritzy, it's a great backdoor atmosphere, have fun, see your friends, free your family, sit on a picnic table, enjoy yourself, and have some of the best not overpriced hamburgers you can possibly think of, I've got two options for you. The first one is over in the Germantown area, and it's Jack Brown's. My daughter turned me into this place. The burgers are not huge. They're a good size. They have all kinds of everything you can possibly think to put on it. I get just a plain old American hamburger. It's not so big that it's uncomfortable to eat. It's delicious. You don't feel overly full and just stuffed to the gills. It's so, so good. On the west side, over on Charlotte, is Bobby's Dairy Dip. Now, this is an institution. I think it was uh, born. What? <laughs> I think it was founded in the 50s. And it's a neighborhood haunt. It's got the best little ice creams and, and hot dogs. But the hamburger is particularly really, really good. Nothing fancy. You can sit out on a side porch, a side terrace. It's only open about seven months of the year. You've got to check it out. And you're going to see lines out the door throughout the summer for both of these places and I know you're going to enjoy it. You need a good hamburger now and then. Those are the best two spots. Number three, you have to know this or driving around might make you a little bit crazy. Nashville's really kind of built on a scribble picture. Now there's a reason for that. We're not just crazy southerners. There's a reason for that. If you look at the map, you'll see that the Cumberland River squiggles all over. We've got the two lakes that are up on the northeast side. The roads that brought everybody to Nashville had to squiggle around to get to their destinations. So Nashville, it seems, is really drawn more on a scribble picture and uh, it's just the way it is. Here's what I do. Even when I know exactly where I'm going, sometimes because of traffic patterns, it changes during the day, sometimes because of road closings, go ahead and put into your Google Maps or any of your favorite map place, Waze is even better, put into that the fastest way to get there. Some days it may be one route and some days the same place may take you another route. Our scribble pictures or straight grid drawings, either way, make sure to get to the fastest way you can get there, you might wanna go ahead and uh, snap open your uh, map system. The con to that is, if you get so used to it, you may not remember how to get around without it.
So speaking of roads and getting around easily in Nashville, we are kind of complicated because our roads change names a whole lot. Now again, we're not crazy. There's a reason for that. Old Hickory Boulevard goes 70 miles entirely around, almost unbroken loop around Nashville and the entire Davidson County. Now it used to be connected by different ferries as it crossed the rivers. And although they made a full loop, when it was making those crossings, it often would change names. It also runs into in sections what are called state routes and state highways. So Old Hickory Boulevard, if you want to confuse somebody and tell them you live right off of Old Hickory Boulevard, you're frankly telling them absolutely nothing. By the way, I grew up on Old Hickory Boulevard. <laughs> so I know what I'm talking about. Um, people would say, oh, I know exactly where you are. No, they had no clue where I was because there's lots of different parts of Old Hickory Boulevard. But the roads change names a lot. Briley Parkway is also Old Hickory Boulevard at some places. Harding Road is what takes you into uh, West End when you get to a certain place, which becomes Broadway when you get to another area when you're getting to downtown. Harding Road actually becomes a split of Highway 100 and Highway 70. Harding Place runs perpendicular to it and runs into Harding Road, but Harding Place becomes, as you go all the way across to 65, do you get my point? Use those Google Maps, use Waze if you don't want to be totally confused. Um, and you'll start getting it, you'll start getting it. Something else I'll mention, Nashvillians do not call roads by their state highway number. So it might be that you are on 431, but we call 431 Hillsborough Road. You'll start to learn it. But when you say, I'm on 431 or I'm on 31, which is Franklin Road, most Nashvillians aren't even gonna understand where you are, although they know exactly where you are if you say the names of the street. Helpful? Confused yet? I get it. Number five, if you're coming from the north, don't pack your snow shovels. You're never gonna need it unless you wanna use it as memorabilia. You can leave that at home and save the cost. However, number six, do bring your washer and dryer or refrigerator. If you're selling your home and you had one there and you liked it there, go ahead and bring it here because we usually do not sell our homes with furniture, washers and dryers, or uh, refrigerators. Now there was a time during the heat of COVID and the heat of supply chain issues that I was absolutely telling everybody, even if you hate your refrigerator and washer and dry it and want to buy a new one when you got here, don't do it yet. Keep those as extras or sell them on Marketplace because we were having trouble getting them here. We're not having that, nearly that trouble now and most people are gonna take theirs with them. So in case you plan to eat out of your own home, bring your refrigerator. Know what that is? We call that a buggy. It's not a grocery cart. We call it a buggy. And you know where they go when you're finished with them? In the cart. You don't leave it out on the street. You don't push it out to the main street. You put it in its corral and everybody be happy. There'll be more on that later. Number eight, our weather is unpredictable. If you don't like it, it is said that you just need to stick around for 24 hours because it's gonna change. That's pretty good. This is one of the only places, especially when the season is changing, that it's fall. This is September 12th. I think the high is gonna be 77. Really nice wetter weather, as you can tell. But this is one of the places that you can start off the day in, in a heavy sweater. You end the day in a heavy sweater. In the middle of the day, you are in your bathing suit. So that with the seasonal changes, it's almost like, but it does change a lot. So if you don't like it, here's the other thing though. You're gonna know it. The all TV channels do nothing but talk nonstop about the weather. And because of that, you are forewarned continually about what bad weather might be. I know a lot of people worry about tornadoes. You're gonna know minute by minute, street by street where the bad atmosphere seems to be and um you know the biggest happiest thing is if there's going to be maybe snow forecasted for four days from now people will just flood the groceries because evidently all we do is eat when and if we ever have snow not often maybe twice a year mostly an ice event but um you're going to know about it 
Number nine, about things you need to know, and you probably do know this already, that Nashville is considered, first of all, one of the top tier 50 cities in the nation. Now, let's put this in perspective. Our cost of living in Nashville is quite low. We're on the lower end of those top tier 50 cities. One thing you might know, though, is that our cost of living is not as low. We're below the median price of cost of living, but our cost of living would be quite a bit lower than that if housing didn't go into it. Our housing is not inexpensive. I think it's 102% above the median of cost of living. And uh, particularly if you get to certain deep locations like into Williamson County and close into downtown uh, Nashville area, not downtown, but more of the outside of the 440 loop. If you get into some of those pockets, it gets quite expensive. But um, I have a whole video about the real nitty gritty of cost of livings. You might want to check it out. Hey, if you're liking all this information about Nashville and want to know more, go ahead and subscribe to this show. Each week we do a new show about something related to Nashville, best neighborhoods, communities, all the things you might want to know about Nashville. So if you're enjoying it, go ahead tap on this bell. I'm Susan Thetford. I am a realtor with EXP Realty. I'm a native Nashvilleian, one of the few remaining unicorns. And I really want to share all the information about Nashville, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's not to have you move here. It's to have you understand where you're moving to. And uh, frankly, it's selfish on my part. I want to keep Nashville with its good Southern charm and conservative values. If that's for you, great. If it's not for you, great find another spot you won't be happy here however if you are a sports lover you're gonna love our sports we love our sports here now 1998 was a great year for Nashville and that kind of put us on the map is really where I think it began we got both the uh, NHL Nashville Predators started playing hockey here and we also got the Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers moved here and they became our Tennessee Titans. So we have the number one franchise of all times according to ESPN as far as what's the best sports experience. They gave that title to Nashville Predators back in 2017 because of our amazing fan base. Now if you go to a hockey game if you've never been to a hockey game, you need to go to at least one because they are so much fun. It's raucous, wild, good fun. And you're likely to hear some amazing chants and you will probably see a few catfish thrown on the ice. Maybe it comes from somebody in a seat near you, but it's so much fun. Our sports are amazing. We now have a MLS soccer team. I've been to one of those games. Actually, they're a lot of fun as well. I went to a girls game and it's on a much smaller field venue. A lot of fun to go to. Very beautiful. It's a part of town that most people haven't been to much and I think we'll certainly enjoy. We also have baseball. We also have so many other sports, uh, youth sports, any kind of sports that you might want, adult sports, and because so many people come from different areas. But if you're looking for the pro sport game, we've got it all right here. Number 12, food. We eat here. We eat a lot here. And so many people have moved to the Nashville area. And they've brought their different ethnicities and, and, and fun cuisines that they really, really love. So it's not only the Southern fried stuff. It's not only Tennessee hot chicken, though that's become such a huge thing. I don't even frankly understand it because I can't do hot chicken. However, if you're looking for, and you can find all types of foods all over the place, but to give you an idea, over in Edge Hill, it's well known for some of its Asian uh, restaurants and cuisines. Germantown, this is gonna be obvious, for its German food and beer gardens. Uh, Sylvan Park area is known for its just laid back pub, kind of pub food and neighborhood. Uh, all of these areas have a lot of neighborhood restaurants. One of the things I tell people all the time is don't worry, when we find the community that you like the best, you're gonna then find your neighborhood haunts that you're gonna want. It's not just all chains. And I found so many people, especially if they're coming from a big area, wanna get away from everything being a chain national and international kind of flavor but to have a local atmosphere every single one of these areas has that local atmosphere just wait till we get to talking about the music if you want to go to sobro which is the southern broadway area that's where you're going to find more of the upscale dining and the gulch now every single area has its upscale but i'm finding people are really looking for a laid back where's their neighborhood type of food 
You're gonna find it anywhere and everywhere all over Nashville. Okay, let's get to number 13, which is a new word to your vocabulary called transpotainment. What does that mean? It's the silly pebble taverns and all the, the modes of transportation that you're going to see, the buses with um, DJs on them, all the things that you're gonna see down around the lower Broadway area, which is where the bridezillas and the bachelorette parties, they all like to come and party like there's no tomorrow. So transpotainment. Here's the new card game that you and your kids can now learn to play. Count the number of bachelorettes and the very obvious tourists that you see down on 12th Avenue, down around the Gulch area, the people taking pictures at all of the murals that we've got. Count the number of those type people that you see on your side of the car. The winner takes all at the end of the drive. Let's get to number 14, which is the state's number one grocery store has several different uh, places here around the Davidson County area, and it's not a Trader Joe's for all you Californians, and it's not Whole Foods. It's called the Turnip Truck. It is from locally sourced farmers around the area within about a 200 mile radius. They have a hot bar. They have um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner at this hot bar. Some of the best food you're going to get at the very, very local turnip truck, which is named the number one grocery in the state. That's huge. That's against Kroger and all the other ones that I've named. You're going to like it. Organics. If that's your thing, be sure to check out the turnip truck. And you're not going to hear that any other place but right here. Hey, and if you're liking this information, stick around. Next week, I'm going to show you one of the newest, hottest areas, which is where I am right now. The newest, hottest areas with a lot of new comb construction, and you're not going to want to miss out on that. But last and not least, have you ever been watching some of my videos and it's very, very loud through the summertime with sounding, you don't know what that noise is, very, very high noise? Well, Tennessee and a lot of the states of the South host in the summertime on various years the loudest insects on earth yay no not really but they don't bother you they don't bite they don't fly they don't get in your face but they can be very very noisy it's a cicada cicadas bury themselves in the ground for 13 years they're two different types 13 year and 17 year types they burrow down in the ground and um, when they come out of hibernation they're all looking to mate and during the summertime uh, peak months are june july and august is what i'm seeing they can get very loud in the early afternoons to evening that's those males who are making their gorgeous noise to attract the females and they can be super loud that love sound <laughs> that the male cicada makes can be as high as 100 decibels that's about the sound decibel level of a mower and a little bit lower only than a rock concert. They can get girly loud. So if you've heard some of my videos lately, because I try to take you outside everywhere so that you see all of Middle Tennessee. Sometimes they've been loud. Sorry, you can't get rid of a cicada when he wants to be heard. Okay, remember I told you there'd be more about those buggies? All around funny, funny lady, reformed California. Here's her take on the buggies. Hi, my name is Carolyn. I'm a recovering Californian, and today's Southern lesson is um, this is called a buggy. Uh, it's to get groceries. It's actually not a homeless U-Haul. I know. I didn't know either. And um, it's Southern tradition when you're done with your buggy uh, to return it to the buggy uh, corral to be with the other buggies. They actually don't belong on the boulevard or in the LA River. Uh, buggy is not an aquatic species and it will drown. Check out this video if you want to find out more about the cost of living here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Next week, I'm going to show you one of the hottest new developments near Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, I'll see you then.